What should be the level of expectations for Bob Sala's inaugural year with the Jets? What are the expe- We've debated this a little bit. We have. Say? And, and we've waffled back and forth, and there's been this narrative where we don't have to have high expectations. It's the Jets, right? Let's give them some time. Robert Sala just got here. And originally, uh, up till about 10 minutes ago, I wanted to say, just be competitive. <laughs> be in every game. Say it, Nate. You know, that's the thing. That's it. But no, I want more. I want more. I want these guys... To have double-digit wins. No. You're saying, Nate? Double-digit wins. Yes, double-digit wins. You know why? Because I'm looking at a team within their division that had a similar turnaround. You look at the Miami Dolphins, okay. right? A couple of years ago, five wins, fourth in their division. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, what they were doing with Brian Flores, bringing in free agents, understanding they had a top-five quarterback in the draft, defensive-minded head coach, quick turnaround just like that. They win 10 games. There's so many parallels with the Jets, right? Defensive-minded head coach. Mm -hmm. They go get a top-five quarterback in the draft in Zach Wilson. They bring in a ton of free agents that can help out this young QB. Why are we sitting here saying, just be competitive? Mm -hmm. Like, the Jets are the NFL version of Rudy, Mm -hmm. embodied in a football team. No, I don't want them to just take the field and hope that they play okay. I feel like they need to have their expectations a lot higher than just being competitive. I say 10 wins, and that right there is the expectations for Robert Sala's Jets in 2020. Double-digit wins from Burleson. They're going to take Zach Wilson's jersey and just lay it down on Coach's desk. They don't play. Uh, That didn't happen, (laughs) by the way.